House of Ramirez does not do sports, politics, or religion. However, understanding that the city elections are this year and how impactful and important it is for all of us Atlantans, I have decided to open my platform to politics, to give a fair shot to each running candidate to tell their story. This conversation needed to happen, and we are having the conversation for the love of community. Hey guys, this is House Ramirez, and y'all already know how I get down. I'm out here in the hot streets of Atlanta representing big for my community. And I highlight entrepreneurs and people that are doing exclusive things in their own community. So today I have with me a brother and a friend, Mr. Jason Hudgens. Mr. Jason Hudgens, for our audience that don't know you, can you please go ahead and tell us who you are and where you are from? Hey, hello everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, Leslie. I appreciate you so much and um, all of the work that you do in advocacy. Um, my name is Jason Hudgens. Um, I live in the Westview community in Southwest Atlanta. I've lived here uh, in Atlanta for 15 years. Uh, my family's originally from Atlanta, uh, from the Collier Heights community, actually. We uh, draw several generations uh, back to Collier Heights, but my father was in the military. Uh, we literally lived all over the world. Um, and uh, I claim Louisville, Kentucky is my hometown. Uh, it's where I graduated high school, where I graduated from college uh, after coming back from uh, Hampton University. Um, Atlanta's home and Westview was home. I was president of the Westview Community Organization for five years. I'm a former chairman of NPUT. I was on the executive board for five years. Um, I've served this community in different capacities, um, mostly in the background. I am, uh, and, and you know this, uh, I am not someone who likes to be in the forefront. Um, I think there's plenty of room and plenty of work that happens in the background. I think that's where a lot of the real work uh, happens. And so that's sort of my story. I, I, I believe in uh, serving. I believe in giving of myself. Uh, and I'm happy to do that for my community now. It's time to step up for the community. I agree with you. You know, I agree with you. It's it's time to actually, you know, get into the work, get into the process of finding solutions for our day to day, um, you know, problems. So, um, yeah, shout out to you and your family. You know, thank you for your father's service and also for just coming back to Atlanta. I know that your heart, you're repping another state, but we appreciate you coming back and just repping and just, you know, you know, getting grounded and just giving back to the community. Um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of will and love for thy neighbor. So um, kudos to you, Jason, kudos to you. So thank you for that. I wanna go ahead and ask you, can you please tell us what motivated you to run for city council? And for our audience that doesn't understand what that seat entails, can you please go ahead and explain that to us? Sure, I, you know, as I said before, I have served this community in different capacities um, as we go on through. The truth is I've worked on a lot of this work uh, for free for the last couple of years. Um, you know, countless meetings, uh, countless uh, community sessions. Um, the truth is in Westview, there was a period, particularly when I was president, that when uh, something happened in the community before people would call 911, they would call my phone. And then I would have to say, depending on what's going on, I need you to dial the police or uh, call the fire department. Uh, I am not the right person. I'm coming, but I'm not the right person uh, to be there first. Uh, I, I think that speaks to the strength of the work that I've done. I think I'm a trusted voice in my community um, and, and around some of this work. Really what motivated me to run was uh, the city just, uh, it is going through the final stages of city council, the comprehensive development plan. Um, and we were earlier this year, the mayor had just announced that she was uh, not running for re-election. And I was leaving an NPU meeting and I was 38 hot um, over the engagement process around this, that we were talking about land use and uh, knowing that this district and my community uh, it is kind of a hotbed right now for displacement. Uh, we've seen home prices go through the absolute roof. Uh, literally a home was just... Um, Put on the market down the street for me for $850,000 this morning. I bought my home for under $150,000 six years ago. So we're talking about levels of development that are going to displace people that my senior neighbors aren't going to be able to live in a community that they help to build. Um, it, it's not that development is bad. It's just when you don't make proper policy, it creates that. 
And I saw that through the lens of the, the, the CDP. And I was talking with one of my mentors and I was fussing. Um, and as many way, times, uh, you know, when you have a great mentor, they let you fuss and then they challenge you. And finally, you know, he took a pause and he said, at what point are you going to step up? Um, I know you like working in the background, but you may be the leader that you're looking for right now. Um, and I'll be honest, people have talked about me running for office for a very long time, probably as long as I can remember. You know, one of my uncles, uh, when I was a kid at, at my sixth or seventh birthday, um, told, you know, my family that I was going to be something, I was going to run for office, and I was going to be elected. And, you know, he spoke that over my life. Um, people have said that about me for a very long time. I've always rejected it. I like working in the background. I like the ability to not be known by everyone. I think when my mentor said that this time, something was different. Um, I think we're in a moment in Atlanta, and I think it is time for people who have the ability, who have the skill set to jump off of the bench and step up for the community. Um, that's really why I'm running. I'm running because of my neighbors. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a community leader. And so, you know, this from when there are issues in the community, I don't get to hide like our politicians do. I don't get to ignore the issues. Uh, people know where I live. <laughs> they know my phone number. They see me at the grocery store. They see me at the local restaurants. And so I have a history that you have to work on these issues and really solve them at the root cause. That's really what motivated me to run. If we cannot come up with solutions at this point in our history, we're going to look back in, in a couple of years and when our kids are, are growing up and say, this was the moment that Atlanta changed and not for the better. I agree with you. You know, the time to cause change is now. And the way we cause that change is by hopping in the hot seat. We have to take matters into our own hands. If we want to see that change start in our community, you clearly started doing that many years ago. And it's it's about time. And I totally dig it when you say I'm not a politician, I'm a community man, because many of us were like, no, we respect politics. We just don't dabble into it. But if y'all need help with the community, let me know. <laughs> and that's how it should be. You know, people should be in power um, and in seats that impact our communities that actually care about what's going on in detail with our communities. So thank you for that. Paying attention to that. Having that will, that, that determination to actually step up and be that leader. Um, so shout out to your uncle, to your parents, um, and to everybody just, you know, coaching you and putting that bug in your ear for so long. <laughs> Speaking things into existence is a real thing, okay? Um, I want to ask you, uh, what do you bring to the position that is unique to you? Now, many say, you know, my, my work ethic or my, my social skills or whatever it may be that they feel that that's what makes it unique, good for them. And you know, we can't knock that. But what is unique about you, Jason, that you bring to this position, this chair, this opportunity of change for the city in that district? Yeah, I think that's a great question. It, it, it is the skill set that I bring that is unique. Um, I look at city council and running for city council, not as a position to sit in and have. It's a job interview. Um, and I view this the very same way. I'm, I, I'm a corporate trainer by trade. Um, and when I hire trainers, I view this through the same lens that I, I hire my trainers. Um, you've got to bring a skill set to the table. You have to be able to speak to the problems that are going on right now around you. And you have to be able to solve, not just for the moment you're in, but grow and develop so that you'll have the skill set in the future as these problems grow and change and evolve in the future. Um, you know, in my, I've run a multinational uh, training organization for the last 10 years. I've had the same, uh, worked for the same company for 10 years, not the same job. Um, and I literally teach day in and day out I teach leaders how to use data, information, put the right people in place, and to get better results. I think what is different about me compared to what we see on the city council now, and even some people who are running uh, for council, is that it is about the skill set that we're uh, bringing. It is about the, the results that we're trying to get. I don't hear our council right now talk about things through the lens of data. You hear blanket statements like, I was out in the community and people told me, where are the numbers? Where's 
the information and how are you um, qualifying what you're saying day in and day out and putting against the information, not just so that you can get results, but also so that you can measure those results in the future. I think that's what's different. Uh, you know, also as a corporate trainer, uh, I am charged not just with conveying information, but I have to mold my message. Uh, to the people that I am talking to. And that may mean from class to class or person to person having the same conversation in a much different way. I think that is a vital skill set uh, in this position, particularly in, in a district like the 10th district that is very much changing. Uh, you have uh, very educated, you have those who did not have educational opportunities, you have those uh, that have, you know, certain incomes, those who don't have that income. And so you have to be able to mold your message to who you're talking to, but at the end of the day, get the same results across the board, no matter who you're speaking with. I think that skill set and what I bring to the table there is is what's different. I employed it, you know, as a community president. I did it as an MPU chair. Um, I do it in everything. I've served on several boards. I bring that skill set no matter where I go. Um, I'll tell you this. I, I found a letter um, when I first launched my campaign. I was searching for my mom. Uh, I needed some pictures, and I was searching um, a, a bag at my mom's house for uh, some pictures, and I found a letter. Uh, there was an old lady, her name was Miss Lily Kate, uh, we called her Miss BB, uh, from my grandfather's church. She was a very old lady, but she was tall, and that's how she and I got together. Uh, she was she was a, over six foot a, as a woman, and so we bonded over our height, um, and she, uh, she would send me $25 a month when I was in college, uh, first when I went to Hampton, and then when I transferred home to the University of Louisville, she would send me $25 a month, which for her on a fixed income was a lot of money. Uh, for me, uh, a broke college student, it was also a lot of money. Sometimes that was after I'd run through uh, all the money my parents had given me, that was all I had left. Um, but she, there was a note, um, and I remembered the note, I just found it. Uh, my mom had kept it where she said, you know, I'm sending you this as an investment. Um, I want you to go get this knowledge and then for people like me, and she said in the letter, you know, I didn't have the chance to go to college. I want you to bring this knowledge back to your community uh, and make some differences and changes. Um, I think when we look at the generation that came before us, they sent my generation, gave us the best that they could. Um, education, opportunities, and told us to go and get that. This is an opportunity. I chose to live in Southwest Atlanta. I chose to live in Westview, uh, partly because I knew that I had something that I could give back. This is my opportunity now in order to do that. And I think that level of service is what is different from what we see currently. And everybody knows this is a very positive platform and we don't bash, but you know, sometimes, like you said, the numbers show and the proof is in the pudding when it shows a certain way and we highlight on it, it's not bashing. It's actually just statements that it's pulling out the receipts, you know, calling it out for what it is. And I want to go ahead and just pinpoint on what you said about the young lady that looked after you and just, you know, she was paving the way in a, we can say in a very small way, but a very impactful way in your future, in your life. You know, um, and, and that's what we need. We need people that care about others, that are willing to pour onto others, give opportunities to others, uh, just pour onto our community and care to, to grow our community. It takes a village, it really does. So um, you come from great family members, great friends, and it shows. Um, so I wanna go ahead and ask you, can you please tell us how we may support you? like? give us your web page, your social media. I want to make sure that the people already know who you are now. How can we engage? How can we donate? How can we volunteer? I know election day is around the corner, but we can still do something, Jason. Please tell us how we can support you. Yeah, you can find me uh, on my website. It has all of the information about my platform. I've been very transparent in this race because I want people to know what I believe. Um, and I want you to vote for me, uh, not just because you know me or because you know my name or even my work before. I want you to know what I believe and what that result will look like for you. So go to Jason, the number four, ATL.com. Uh, that's my website. 
Um, you can also find me on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, Jason, the number four ATL. I'm the same across the board. I try to be consistent in everything. Uh, you're going to see a TikTok blitz. I did not know my sister was a TikTok star um, and had like 200,000 uh, followers. Uh, right. Uh, so she is going to be blasting me out um, over the weekend. You'll see a bunch of my uh, views on social media, especially on Twitter. Um, let's say I'll say this, that there uh, I put up a post this morning. Um, and when people are looking at my site and when they're looking at my positions, um, it, it simply said that the forest was shrinking, but the trees kept voting for the ax because its handle was made of wood and they thought it was one of them. We have to look differently um, and, and, and hold our politicians. Um, I'm not a politician by trade, but uh, jumping into this race makes me one. And it, it is not just, I want you to vote for me. I want you to know what I believe and know what my positions are so that you can hold me accountable and so that we can have deeper conversations um, as we go through the next couple of days. Then on Tuesday, um, we've got to get out there and vote. The turnout is really down right now. Uh, we know the weather's been crappy the last couple of days, but people have to get out and vote. We know you're tired. Uh, we know you haven't seen all of the results, especially from the national level, but you have to realize that your city councilman has more impact on your day-to-day -day life than the president of the United States does. And so dive in, uh, get in, find this information, but don't just find it for yourself. What I'm also asking you, share the information out, share my website, share the posts on social media, and let's have a really great conversation over the next four days. And I love how you're motivating people to vote. Um, you know, statistics do show that, you know, 30-year-olds uh, and younger, we don't exercise our right to vote. And many people have, you know, paved the way, lost their lives, fought for us to have that privilege. Um, and it's important that we go out there and make our voice count. It's our voice. And if we don't exercise that right, we're just accepting what's handed to us. And sometimes, like you said, it could be an ax. Um, so I want to go ahead and just thank you for everything that you've been doing in the community. I've seen it firsthand. Um, um, I'm, I'm not biased in this race. I believe that everybody has good intentions, but I have seen firsthand what you do for your community. And I want to applaud you. And I want to thank you. You not just talk the talk, you walk the walk, Jason. And for that, we have to pay attention. We need somebody that not just fits a criteria and a checkbox. We need somebody that's about the community. Um, I want to go ahead and ask you, who is your House of Ramirez shout out? Now, you know, I'm very big on shout outs. You know, House of Ramirez always commends and applauds everybody that has been holding me down, whether in my past, in my future career or personal life. It's important. Like I mentioned before, it's a village that makes things possible that that push you to keep going. It's not a one man show. Um, so I want to go ahead and give you my platform so you could go ahead and spotlight the individuals that have been in your corner holding you down. Yeah, my first House of Ramirez uh, sh uh, shout out definitely goes to my grandmother. Um, she is my rock. Um, she has always been in my corner, uh, gave up a part of what should have been um, her golden years when she should have been retired and uh, just relaxing, found a beach somewhere uh, to help make sure that I had a stable home uh, somewhere where I could be successful and a great launching pad into the successful life that, it, that I have now. Um, and, and also, you know, when I launched this campaign, uh, I told her I was thinking about it a couple of days before. Uh, and my grandmother is a, a holy woman. She, she is a former first lady. My grandfather passed a couple of years ago. Uh, she said, I'm going to pray about this. And I didn't hear from her for two days. She didn't answer her phone. She was praying. Um, and when she came out from praying, she told me what she uh, felt like the answer was. And, and I would not be here right now, probably if it wasn't for her prayers um, and definitely for her support. I also got to shout out an amazing team. Uh, my brother, uh, Travell Williams, who created all of my merchandise. You'll see uh, one of my hoodies that I'm wearing today. It's cold and it's hoodie season and I have broken them out. Uh, the merch will be out. I'll be handing out t-shirts and, and some other things a little bit later today. Uh, my big brother, uh, Derek, Dr. Derek Tenille, um, who has been out canvassing with me, um, definitely hitting these streets. Uh, you know, we didn't put out every time we went out and knocked on a door because it is important just to do it. I had an, a great team, Derek, uh, Brandon, Jamel, um, Melanie, um, 
Derek Vaughn um, and also Charles, my friend Charles, who all were hitting the road, uh, the roads with me, knocking on doors, making it happen. But there is one special shout out that I have to give um, definitely to Mark Esho, who did my videos and uh, really set me up. He's a professional. This is a guy who uh, films at Mercedes Benz Stadium, uh, films some of the biggest acts that you uh, know in the world. Um, and when I called him and said, hey, I'm launching this campaign, he said, what can I do um, and, and made himself available um, for for sure. Uh, but the biggest shout out I have to give is to my friend, my sister, my partner in crime, um, Kiyomi Rollins. Um, you have not been supported in this world until a Black woman makes a decision that you're worth something and that she's going to support you. Um, Kiyomi has been in the trenches with me for years in community work. Um, and when I decided to launch this campaign, uh, she instantly changed my name in her phone. She said, that's Councilman Hudgens, uh, and we're going to make this happen. And she put her money where her mouth is, her time, her treasure, her talents. Um, and I, this would not have been possible um, these last couple of months without her help and support. Um, shout out to her children um, and to Mark, who uh, make the sacrifice of letting her be with me um, sometimes. And, you know, it, it is a, a holistic effort. And I am grateful for every person who's given their time, every donor who gave money, and every person who believes in this campaign uh, so that we can make some change. Um, when I jumped in, uh, I'll say this and then I'll shut up. I'm, you know, I'm a corporate trainer raised by a Southern Baptist pastor. I can go. Uh, when I jumped into this race uh, and I told people that I was running, the very first thing people would do would be like, do you know who you're running against? Um, and my belief from the very beginning was it's not about personality. Um, as you said, this is a positive space. You know, I don't have an issue personally uh, with, with the incumbent. I have an issue with the ideas that are coming through the council, and I have an issue with the results that we're giving, uh, getting uh, right now. And so jumping into this race for me uh, was very different. It was something that is not normally uh, my, my flow and how I run my program. Um, as I said, I like working in the background, but it was necessary. And having the support of a bunch of people behind me was the only way that I've been successful up until this point. And I believe it's the reason that I'm gonna have victory on Tuesday night. So I appreciate your platform and let me shout out these people because they worked in the background, but they really do deserve to be in the forefront. It's very humbling of you you know even when you're given the platform you you know you shout out everybody that has been in your corner um and yeah you know it, it's not a personal thing it's just a matter of results that the community has been receiving that you want to change and you're doing the right thing you know many people may not like it but you live with it we live with it we decide and it's the people that decide so we will see everything on Tuesday. And I'm very thankful for you, you know, um, and all of your efforts and your whole team because it's truly amazing, everything that you guys are doing. It's super amazing. I love getting your emails. I get informative info. I'm like, hell yeah, what's up today, <laughs> Jason? <laughs> but um, yeah, I just wanna thank you and your team. Thank you for making time to come in on my show. It's the first time, it's not the last time, Jason. I'll go ahead and put your uh, social media links below so people could click and follow. Um, yeah, thank you. And until next time. Make sure to follow House of Ramirez on all social media platforms.